Friends, my son Aaron is with me today and we are gonna be sharing on walking in love. Praise God. The Bible says be imitators of God as dear children. Mimic God, let God be your greatest example and God is love. Great people of faith are great people of love. And so you don't wanna miss this message. If you wanna get your faith tuned up, let the love of God rule you. Blessings. Friends, we are sharing from Ephesians chapter five and we're talking about walking in love, understanding who you are changes how you live this life. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul talks about who we are and what we have in Christ. But then he begins to talk about our walk in Ephesians four, verse one, he said, walk worthy of the vocation you were called with or the calling wherewith you've been called. You have been called with the high calling of God. Mm -hmm. So walk worthy of that. He says, secondly, he says, I don't want you to walk like the world walks, like the Gentiles walk in the futility and the emptiness and the vanity of their mind. You are not God. Mm -hmm. What you think is not God. Sometimes you need to go in what the word of God says, who Jesus is and what the word of God says. That is the truth. Jesus is the truth and the word of God is the truth. The way you're set apart from the world is through the truth of the word. And then he begins telling us in Ephesians chapter five, about walking in love. It is so important. You know, the Bible says in Colossians chapter three, verse 14, that love is the bond of perfection or maturity. Mm -hmm. And the way you can tell how mature someone is, is not by how uh, much they operate in the gifts, but by how well they walk in the spirit, how well they walk in the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit, the Bible says in Galatians chapter five, verse 22, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. I believe all of the other of the nine, there's nine fruit of the spirit. I believe the eight flow forth from love. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in love, love is, you know, the Bible says that God is love. The Bible doesn't say God is joy. Mm -hmm. or God is peace, this God is love. Mm -hmm. But joy and peace flow forth from love. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in love, it'll lead to joy and stuff and, and peace being in your life. So he faith, faith works by love too. You know, this is something I, I kind of had a real realization about is uh, great people of faith are really people who understand God's love and people who really uh, are quick to forgive, quick to move forward, not holding on to things, you know. Um, we have a lot of great faith preachers that come through our church and, and preach here, like Jesse mm -hmm. Duplantis, uh, Mark Hankins, Andrew Womack, and, and a lot of these great uh, faith giants, they really understand love and walk in it. And I, I love it when they preach on love. You know, I love, love when I hear them. And they really love people, you know, and they, they, they don't hold grudges. They get over things quickly. And that's why their faith works so well. So I love to hear, you know, if, if you want to show me your faith, show me your love. Yeah, first so. James talks about that, and mm -hmm. uh, you know what you're saying. I mean, Galatians five verse six: faith <clears throat> works by love, and great people of faith are great people of love. Andrew Womack and Jamie Womack. Womack. Andrew has been my mentor for years mm -hmm. and years for over forty years. Forty four years. And he's been ministering that long too. You know, people who really ministered for decades upon decades and have been very successful in their ministry um, to other people, they, they often um, really understand love. They've had to get over bitterness, oh, offense, being I've backstabbed. Seen they have to use Andrew, abuse him, mm -hmm. different things, things that have cost him probably hundreds of thousands in the ministry because mm -hmm. people went and did wacky things. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know what, he just he lets moves, it go. moves forward, yeah. He doesn't hold it. Just his focus is on, is on God. It's on Jesus. On Jesus, yeah. And you know what? We need to get over it. <laughs> I tell a funny story. I was in Bible school and Kenneth Copeland came to preach. Mm -hmm. And he preached in the morning on love and he preached about, you know, good. This is at Lester Sumrall's. Dr. Bible Lester Sumrall's. In South World Bend. Harvest Bible College, South Bend, Indiana, 1987, 88. And uh, so in the morning, and I worked in the sound department, mm -hmm. he preached about you know, 80 minutes, we had a 90 minute tape, he preached a long time, mm -hmm. on walking in love. Mm. And at the night, he preached for like two hours. Mm. So I, we had to not make just one tape, 
we had to make two tapes because we had a 90 minute and then we had a 60 minute following <laughs> that we plugged in because you never know how long it, and the people were out at the you know because they're used to going to kenneth copeland's meetings and back in those days they had these uh massive you know uh cassette uh duplicators mm -hmm. where they could probably they could probably duplicate 300 cassettes at once we had one that did 26 i worked there in the sound department but in the basement have, you have hundreds of people yeah. coming but right the, after the, to the 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 guy at the bookstore he asked for for uh for 52 or you know double what we could make i think it was 52 26 times two and so since uh, brother copeland preached you know um and and they asked for 52 we'd made 52 up in the morning and and then we were going to say and i i it, it was that or close to that but so we had to run double that, you know, in the evening. I think it's actually 23, so double that. And so I had to make, instead of just making, you know, for, uh, 46 tapes, I had to make, you know, 92 uh, tapes mm -hmm. just to have, you know, f enough for 46 people to get one. Because, and then we had to put a rubber band and put them mm -hmm. together. And the people were out there fighting mm -hmm. after they just heard an hour and a half preaching in the morning on walking in love mm -hmm. and two hours of preaching nearly at night on walking in love. Like they were out there fighting at the cassette table <laughs> over the over the cassettes and the bookstore manager was standing on the table trying to get him calmed down and he was all worked up and he called my boss and and uh, my boss just told him, he said, listen, you told us this many, and that's how many we're gonna do. They're gonna all leave before the night's over. So you just tell them, you know, we'll mail them to them, take their names and addresses. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, my, my bookstore manager, he, uh, my, my office manager wasn't too kind. His name was Mike and he was pretty direct. And so, man, I went to the office, I always went early. And the, the man who uh, was the administrator for the ministry, his name was Ken Holdery. He's a great man of God, had uh, fought in the Vietnam War and uh, married a, an Asian woman, great, great man of God. But the next morning when I went in about 7.30, about 30, 30 minutes early, he was sitting right there where I worked. And uh, I, went, I went down there, opened the door and he was, he said, did you say such and such to the bookstore manager? I said, no, that was my boss. <laughs> And so, anyway, the bookstore manager had apologized to my boss. Uh, but anyway, they thought it was me, and I don't talk that way because I'm not the boss. I just did what I was told by my boss. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, you know, we need to, it's, it takes effort to walk in love. You've got to let your spirit overcome mm -hmm. your flesh and your emotions. And so, uh, Paul says right here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be followers of God, be imitators of God, mimic God as dear children. You know, when I was a little boy, I just loved my daddy. Mm -hmm. I thought the sun and the, the, you know, set on my daddy. I just, I just thought the world of my dad. And uh, my dad wore big cowboy boots. I always wanted to wear cowboy boots. My dad wouldn't let me wear cowboy boots. Um, you know, because he said I had, my feet had to grow to certain, until I got probably in junior high. Uh, my dad, before my dad would let me have cowboy boots. But uh, I just wanted to be like my daddy. Praise mm -hmm. God. So we need to mimic God, imitate God, mm -hmm. be followers of God as dear children. He says, and walk in love. You know, it's a walk. We're not talking about, it's a lot easier to talk than it is to walk. Mm -hmm. And he says, walk in love as Christ has loved us. Now, how did Jesus love us, Aaron? Unconditionally. Unconditionally. Yeah. Jesus loved us when we were making all the wrong choices, when we were doing all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a young man that I ministered to uh, just at the end of last year. He just called me last night because he told me he had an incurable uh, disease and uh, virus, and the doctors had told him he would never get over it. And I prayed for him, and he went back. And the first time he went back, he came back and it was negative. But then he went back in three months and it was positive. So he went back again. It's been almost a year. And he, uh, he called me last night and said, hey, Pastor, I just wanted to call you and tell you that I'm healed. That's awesome. And uh, Jesus healed me, and I told him how much I loved him, how much I appreciated him. He says, you know, I'm not worthy. And I told him, none of us are worthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy to do this. This is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Jesus loved us unconditionally. Mm -hmm. He loved us when we were making all the wrong choices mm -hmm. and doing all the wrong things. In fact, Romans 5, 8 says that God commended, God demonstrated his love toward us while that we were sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, you know what? He, he didn't die for us when we're godly. It, 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 and, and so it says prior to that, 
in verse 6, he says, When we were without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. There's one qualification that you need to meet to be a candidate for the kingdom of God. You've got to be ungodly. And I'm telling you, Lawson Purdue qualifies. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you qualify too mm -hmm. because we've all sinned. Now, he says, for scarcely for a righteous man will die, yet peradventure a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended, he demonstrated, he revealed his love toward us while we were still sinners. When we were making all the wrong choices and doing all the things, wrong things, Christ died for us. Mm. So I told my good, you know, young friend, I told him, I just want you to know mm. that it's about grace and none of us deserve it. Mm. Amen. So thank God Jesus is a perfect picture of grace. And he says, God loved us. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us as an offering, a sacrifice to God. He really did it unto God. Mm -hmm. He says, a sacrifice, a sweet smelling savor, a sweet offering to God. Mm -hmm. Love. You know, when people walk in love, there's a sweet presence about mm -hmm. them. And when you don't walk in love, there's a not so sweet mm -hmm. presence. And, you know, I remember Kenneth E. Hagin, we call him Papa Hagin, talking about how he went to pray some for some people when he pastored a church. And when he went in the door, God said, there's strife mm. in this place. And, you know, the Bible says in James 3, where envy and strife there is, confusion mm -hmm. and every evil work. So we need to offer our life a sweet smelling sacrifice to God and walk in love as Christ loved us. Mm -hmm. And love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13 says that love is the fulfilling of the law. So he says, uh, fornication, all uncleanliness and covetousness let not be named once uh, among you as becoming saints, as is becoming, as is beautifying the saints in verse three. So fornication. What's that talking about? Uh, sex outside of marriage. Sex outside of marriage, when you're not married. Mm -hmm. Adultery is talking about sex outside of marriage when you are married. Mm -hmm. And Galatians chapter 5 says that those are the, uh, what, the works of the flesh mm -hmm. in Galatians 5 verse 19. So we have the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, mm -hmm. and we have the works of the flesh. So he says fornication and uncleanliness. Uncleanliness is talking about other kinds of sexual sin, any mm -hmm. kind of unclean sexual sin, stay out of it. Pornography. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a huge amount of men in the evangelical church that have a problem with pornography. Mm -hmm. And, man, if you got a problem with it, deal with it. Mm -hmm. Man, do what you got to do. Get mm -hmm. some... Get some uh, accountability partners. Uh, go to a, a good counselor that deals with that. Mm -hmm. um, do you know? Get, I'm telling you, if I was dealing with with looking at sex, on, I'd get rid of my cell phone if I had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just would not. I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad had a bunch of pornography when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was 14 years old, and I took it out to the fire barrel and poured gasoline on it and mm -hmm. burned it. And that's really easier than a lot of these people have to deal with. But you know, I've never went back to it. Yeah. You know, people people will spend, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, on um, going to a, a medical doctor if they have a, a certain illness or sickness to try to get better. But sometimes people have just a lot of issues going on in their soul, but um, they, they don't want to make much effort or even spend the time or maybe the, the resources necessary to... to, to recover in their heart. But if you know, if you need, if you need to talk to a great Christian counselor, you know, find, find someone who's good and, and pay, pay their fee. It's, it's really important that, that your soul is, is made whole. Yes. You know, Dr. Doug Weiss is a good friend of mine and he mm -hmm. has, he has counseled thousands of people and saved thousands of marriages mm -hmm. and helped them. And that's what he talks about primarily mm -hmm. is sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. And he's got a great practice, and he has counselors all around the nation mm -hmm. and different places. And I recommend him highly. If you're struggling in that area, just deal with it. Don't, mm -hmm. don't just act like it's not happening. Get some accountability partners. Do, do what it takes, amen. Mm -hmm. But get that junk out of your life. Praise God. He says what? He says, don't let it be named once among you, as is beautifying to saints. Mm -hmm. That'll just hold you up in a lot of areas. You know, you're talking about how people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions even going to take care of their physical body, mm -hmm. and yet they're emotional, man. They don't. And, and you know, uh, I guess people spend more money on pornography and sex trafficking than mm -hmm. the NFL or NBA mm -hmm. or any it's of that. It's a multi-billion dollar it's industry. It's terrible, terrible letting the devil 
drive you mm -hmm. instead of letting God and the Spirit of God rule you. So praise God, you have the Spirit of God in you, and I, I believe you can overcome any evil thing that the enemy is trying. So he's just talking about these are outward sins. They shouldn't be named once, once among you. Praise God. Now, we're going to be back, and we'll talk about some other stuff. It'll be more encouraging, I promise you. Praise God. But we have to take the truth of the Scriptures, amen, and live the gospel out. So we'll be back in just a few seconds. Uh, we'll be looking for you. Friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue, and I've been teaching Destined to Win from the book of Ephesians. This is one of the greatest teachings that I've ever done. I've had more requests for this teaching than almost any teaching we've done. I've got it in eight parts as I taught it in church, in CD form, also in a USB, and then I also have the teaching in 16 parts as we've taught it on television with my son, Dr. Aaron Perdue. And in this 16 part teaching, I am just thrilled with all the different things that was brought in. So you can get the eight part CDs or the USB that has all the video and audio, or you can get the 16 part as taught on television. Call us and let us know what you'd like to have. We have a special offer today and we're so blessed to have you. Check out our website, HarrisChristianCenter.com. We have this and many other materials, and we have all of these things online for free. Blessings. Praise the Lord, friends. We are back, and we're in Ephesians chapter 5, and we are talking about walking in love. Praise God. The first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul says, this is who you are, and this is what you have. You're blessed. You're favored. Hallelujah. You're predestined to succeed. You're righteous, you, you know. You are forgiven for every sin. You are redeemed from every curse. Mm -hmm. You're accepted in the beloved. He says all those beautiful things about us, who we are and what we have. But the last three chapters, he says, now I want you to walk it out. Mm -hmm. And he says, I, I, don't want, I want you to walk worthy of the calling with, wherewith you've been called. You have been called to a high calling in Christ. And this word calling, you know, I had a young man argue with me, say, I'm not called to do nothing. I'm going to be a banker or whatever. But he hasn't lived out his Christian life very well either. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand God has a call on you. Mm -hmm. And this word calling is the Greek word klesis, and it means invitation or calling to the feast. Mm -hmm. We're all called to heaven. Glory to God. And so live like citizens of heaven on loan to the earth from God. Then he says, don't walk as other Gentiles walk, as the heathen walk in the vanity and the futility and the emptiness of their mind. Renew your mind in the Word of God and let mm -hmm. Jesus live His life big in you. Mm -hmm. And finally, he says here in Ephesians 5, verse 2, walk in love mm -hmm. as Christ has loved us and given Himself. Mm -hmm. Love is the law that, that, that really should drive our life. And we talked about this briefly in the first part of the broadcast, but I really didn't go there. Romans chapter 13 Verse 8 through 10 says this, Owe no man anything but to love one another. We aren't to owe people something like, I owe you one. Mm -hmm. you know? But he says, but love, we, should, we, we owe each other love. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. For this, you will not commit adultery, you will not kill, you will not steal. So we talked about some, Paul talks about some of those physical sins right there. Don't mm -hmm. let it be named once among you. But he says it is briefly comprehended in this. He says in this saying that you will love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you, you got to see how God sees you. That's what the first three chapters of Ephesians talk about. Then you see yourself the way God sees you. So you love God first, then you love yourself because mm -hmm. God loves you. Some people make a really bad choice in relationships because they don't see themselves the way God sees them. Mm -hmm. So we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. And he says this, he says, love works no ill to his neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. If you love your brother, you're going to fulfill God's law. Amen? I like what Jesus said. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Yes. And what commandment did Jesus give his disciples? To love one another. This is my commandment that you love yes. one another. So It's the greatest commandment. Mm -hmm. He said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, because you love one another. Mm -hmm. And so we got to learn to love with the love of God. You know, there are different kinds of love. There is, there is agape, that's the God kind of love. That's unconditional love. Mm -hmm. That's the highest form of love. There is phileo, that's friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we have friends 
and, and we appreciate our friends and we respect things. Uh, Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love. It's based on phileo, that, that Greek word, the brotherly love. There's storge, that's affection. Blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. I love you because you're my family. Praise mm -hmm. God. Now, I thank God for the body of Christ. We're mm -hmm. family in the body. Mm -hmm. But then finally, there is, you know, eros, and that's talking about a physical, sexual kind of love, which is beautiful in the marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's these four main Greek words for love, and, and, uh, but we've got to love with the love of God. The love of God is greater than all of them. And if mm -hmm. you let the love of God rule you, it will change how you walk towards your brothers, your sisters. Now, he talks about don't live like the world, right? Avoid sexual sin and cleanliness, covetousness, fornication, all those things. It's not beautifying to you. But then he says in verse 4, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving things. So don't let filthiness, mm -hmm. foolish talking. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people just talk foolishly. Mm -hmm. and, and they're caught up in the world. The world, man, the world is filthy. Mm -hmm. And he says, they're not convenient. It's, it's like gross. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, treat, you know, older women, right, as your mother. Younger women as your sister. Mm -hmm. Honor, honor the opposite sex. Different areas, he says, but rather giving of thanks. Be a thanks, thanks, mm -hmm. thankful person. I like something that you, a verse that you um, have quoted often, which is, a love covers a multitude of sin. Yeah, you know, some Amen. people get very legalistic and, and want to expose everyone's sin and expose other ministers when they've fallen short or they, they don't do the right things or say the right things. Um, you know, love, God loved us, and, and, and uh, he's not just into exposing all of your faults. Yes. You know, um, I just think there's a lot of, you know, attacks within the body of Christ where everyone's trying to expose, um, j just, just, just like, trying to attack each other all the time. You know, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, her husband got in a sexual affair and divorced her, mm -hmm. and she's a minister of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And she went to Dr. Lester Sumrall, and he says, just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, now, um, sometimes you don't need to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need to just... Identify with. Yeah, you don't, it just doesn't, it doesn't help anybody, mm -hmm. really. And, uh, you know, I know you want to minister to people that are hurting, but some things you don't need to bring out and talk about all the time mm -hmm. in the public, so on and so forth. It's not edifying. It's not really helping a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so he says... Uh, be thankful. Be thankful. Let mm -hmm. thanksgiving rule your life. Mm -hmm. Let love rule your life. He says, uh, but for this you know that no harmonger or unclean person, you know, he says, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God in Christ. So this is talking about your spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. So if your spirit has not been born again, mm -hmm. because you can't be born again and be a whoremonger in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, a born-again per person can commit adultery, mm -hmm. right? But God forgives adultery just like he forgives mm -hmm. all kinds of sin, right? Nor unclean person. That's, again, talking about different types of sexual sins. Nor covetous man who's an idolater. Covetousness, the Bible says, Colossians 3, 5 mm -hmm. is idolatry. Kind of written, Paul writes Colossians a lot like he writes Ephesians. Mm -hmm. And he says has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and Christ. So you just want to stay away from some of these things. Mm -hmm. Just stay away. There's some things you just don't need to get involved in, mm -hmm. period. Let thanksgiving rule your life. Let love rule your life. Let, mm -hmm. let, let faith rule your life. Great people. You brought this out at the beginning of the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Great people of faith. Mm -hmm. Andrew Womack, Dr. Lester Sumrall, Jesse DePlantis, Mark Hankins. They are great people of faith. Mm -hmm. And they're also great people of love. Mm -hmm. So let the love of God rule you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, strife is expensive. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness is expensive. Praise mm -hmm. God. Uh, you know, bitterness uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. So don't be a bitter person. Get better. Praise mm -hmm. God. Don't let strife rule your life. Let love rule your life. Let the love of God rule you. And he says, let no man deceive you with vain words. In verse 6, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the children of obedient, disobedience. Mm -hmm. So, man, don't let anybody lie to you. You know, sometimes people try to take grace, and this is a great book on grace. Mm -hmm. And they try to make it a license to sin. It is not a license to sin. It is the power of God to live right. Mm -hmm. He says, 
He says, be not partakers with them. So there's things that the world's involved in that you don't need to get involved in. Mm -hmm. Praise God that you can just leave there. Praise God. This is something that God showed me about grace, but there's three important aspects of grace. Grace, first of all, frees you. Grace transforms you and grace empowers you. I love you talking about how grace uh, is the power of God. You know, Amen. grace frees you from sin, but it also transforms you into the righteousness of God. But lastly, grace empowers you Amen. to walk it out. Amen. And we can walk out the gospel through the grace of God. You know, uh, Titus, Paul says the grace of God, uh, which has appeared to all men. Teaches us. Teaches us to live soberly, righteously, and godly mm -hmm. in this present world. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus. He is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. He's the full embodiment of grace. Of him we have received, of his fullness, grace upon grace. I'm going to write a book called Grace for Life. Mm -hmm. Man, a revelation of grace has changed my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I live better accidentally than I did on purpose before I understood mm. grace. Aaron, you, you knew me just a little bit before I got a revelation of grace. I got a revelation of and grace it, when it really you were It really has to come by revelation, too. God has to really reveal it to you, what, what His grace means and, and what it's done for you and what it's going to continue to do for you. you know, I, I know people who've I mean, sat in a grace church or uh, heard grace teaching for years but really never caught it. Or got it, and yeah. uh, <laughs> it's, and it, it's kind of sad, evident. but it, but God, God can reveal it to you. Just the power of His grace. To Amen. You. Praise God. You know, grace teaches us to live soberly, righteously, godly. The Bible says this in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So when you really understand love, I think when you get a revelation of grace, it causes you to understand the love of God for you. It will transform your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you will be a living testimony of Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast. If you need prayer today, give us a prayer. If you want our product, we're teaching for my series, Destined to Win. So if you'd like this teaching, just give us a call. We'd love to get it out to you. God bless you, and we appreciate you. Friends, the scripture says, if you will continue in the word of God, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you go to our website at charischristiancenter.com, you can get all of our materials there on the website as you watch them, as you listen, absolutely free of charge. And we've done that just to be a blessing to you. And I believe that the word that has freed me will free you. Blessings. Do you know your true position in Christ Jesus? You have been saved, raised up, and seated in heavenly places with Him. You can stand against any attack of the enemy from a position of victory. You are destined to win. You can get the eight-part live teaching on CD for $48 or on USB for $35, or get the 16-part as seen on TV USB for $59 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.